Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Two neighbors think that because I did gardening, and more for my former neighbor, that means said chores were included with their new house. The second story. Karen tried to scam the store, got caught, called OP a slur and was banned from the store. The third story. After six years of being promised promotions and fair pay, a hardworking tech employee decides to leave his company, and due to the great resigning, the company begs him to stay. The first story is, I'm not your gardener. Ian's Entitled neighbors. They are, one, HPL, high-pitched lady, two, TD, tall dude, NOB, nice old bloke. When I was much younger, I had the chance of living a bit far from my hometown in a semi-rural area, at some place with a nice green space, next to a very nice neighbor, with her own green space adjacent to mine. It was some closed neighborhood, with a few common expenses for maintenance of the inner roads and such stuff, yet not with an HOA in the same way as is in the USA. According to what I read around here, there were just a few homes there, between 25 to 35, I can't recall exactly now, and everybody had an equal vote on issues regarding the common spaces and issues. There was never any problem. Really, never. My nice neighbor was a lady in her 50s. She was very funny, witty, smart, really lovely. She had a boyfriend who used to be there from Friday to Sunday every week, and he was equally nice. Adorable people, both of them, really. I always helped her with her green space, quite more than a garden, whenever I took care of mine, which was quite often. I didn't mind helping her with that, since her boyfriend wasn't able to. It wasn't that easy for him to do that stuff since he had some back issues and was getting treatment for it. And for me, it wasn't a big deal. And after all the tasty stuff she cooked and gave me, hey, try this, tell me if you like it, was a recurring sentence. It was the least I could do. Also, her two dogs were with me all the time when I was in her place, and they were adorable. Well, as it happens, one day they decided to move to some city quite a few hundred kilometers from there and get married. So she put the house on sale. Some people came to see the house, which was beautiful. So I was doing the usual gardening work at her place when the couple who later bought the house were first visiting. I didn't pay much attention, but I remembered afterwards it was them because she, the girl in the couple, had a very distinctive voice in a very high pitch, yet not unpleasant. Her unpleasantness would show later, but not regarding her voice. Also, her husband was very much taller than her, like two heads taller, TD, tall dude from now on. One day, my neighbor and her boyfriend said their goodbyes, left with me a few things to donate, the ones they couldn't take care of, some for me if I wanted, I didn't, save for one great cast iron pan that somehow they wouldn't take, and left. I was sad to see them go, but they were chasing a good fortune together, so I was also happy for them. Well, the new neighbors, ENs from now on, got there one day, and I had been told beforehand by the realtor, so I worked a bit on their green space in order for it to look nice. The ENs didn't say their hello, yet I didn't mind. They had their right to be less sociable than other people, are, and unless they were annoying, I was okay with that. A couple days after they moved, I was taking care of the grass in my property, cutting some dried branches of a tree, plum, and other things, and HPL called me. I'm translating. Hey boy, when you finish there, you gotta do some work here too. The grass is quite grown and we have more stuff to do. I was a bit confused at first, but then I remembered that when they first visited, I was doing gardening stuff for my former neighbor, and that's why she must have thought it was my duty. I got close to her and explained to her that I was doing maintenance of my property, that I was friends with my former neighbor, and about her boyfriend's situation and why I was helping her. She said okay and went inside her house. A few days later, could have been three days, there was the monthly neighbor's meeting. After a few issues were debated, mostly about a few bumps in the dirt roads, both ENs said they had an issue, and HPL said that I was refusing to do my chores, and that I should get a reprimand and not be paid in full. I was quiet and calm and was about to speak when another homeowner, who was aware of my relationship with my former neighbor, said, he was never getting paid. He doesn't do any work for any of us. He was helping her neighbor, that is. I added that I had already told her that and that I explained to her my relationship with my neighbor and her BF and that I thought I made it quite clear. TD then said that when they visited the house, they saw me doing the gardening and assumed that it was included with the common expenses. So it could be said they bought the property under those assumptions. At that moment, I was quite amused because the whole issue was ridiculous. I told them something like this, not the exact words. After these years, I can't recall every single term. I'm sorry that you thought my gardening came for free with the house. It came for free with the relationship I had with my former neighbor and that's it. No one told you that I would be working for you for free or under common expenses. 
and your own assumptions are just flawed, I'm sorry. At that point, HPL lost her temper and shouted at me that I was disrespecting her husband and her husband's authority. Huh? That I was rude and a bully, an accusation without any truth, and that I was purposefully refusing doing their gardening. After her screaming show, there was a very, very long and uncomfortable silence. I had never witnessed anyone shouting in those meetings, which were very amicable and quiet. So I broke the silence and told her, after what I'm going to say, I'll ask my new neighbors to explicitly point out in which ways I was, according to them, rude and a bully. I would also like to know in which ways I disrespected her husband and his supposed authority, and also which authority do they think they have over me. On the other hand, they're right. I purposefully refuse to do their gardening, and I'll assure you that I'll never do it, not even if they want to pay for it. They shut up and left before the meeting was over. Yes, we, the rest, stayed a bit afterwards talking about what happened. It was impossible not to. And then I went to the EN's neighbor, a nice old bloke, N.O.B., who invited me and a couple other homeowners over. He lived to the other side of the E.N.'s. He offered his cappuccino, yay, or teas. He seemed to know a lot about tea. While there, I had this idea and I told him, hey, I can come a couple days a week for a little while to take care of your plants and trees. More like bushes, really, and I can have a cappuccino here. He agreed. I had a triple interest in this. One, the cappuccinos. Two, angering E.N.'s, who will see I do some gardening to their other neighbor. Three, N.O.B.'s granddaughter, who was beautiful and I had already seen her around. It all went well. Cappuccinos were great, Ian's were furious, and N.O.B.'s granddaughter ended up being a good friend of mine and introducing me to a friend of hers who would then become my girlfriend. Oh, I also had another interest, N.O.B.'s library. He had great books and he lent them to me. Important note, while the facts were as I wrote here, some words might not be entirely precise because this happened more than 25 years ago and I can't recall every single word. The second story is... Karen tried to scam the store, and after she got caught, called me a slur word and got banned. Fair warning, I'm a nerd, so I'll be using video game names for others to disclose names. Context, I'm a male, 19 with mild autism, who had my first run-in with a Karen at work. If my story's a little sloppy, I apologize for any mistakes. Cast, Mangle, Me, K, you know what I'm talking about. AS, Awesome Son, GLaDOS, Awesome Manager. Lucky, BFF. Now on with the show. It was a typical afternoon at work where it rhymes with wave day, crowded as hell and so on. I was working up front with bagging stuff for customers. One thing about me was I always liked making the paying people laugh, cracking corny jokes, prop comedy, etc. On this day, however, I was with GLaDOS, awesome manager, bagging stuff and then she appeared. She was the typical Karen look, blonde dyed hair, fake nails, you know. She also had a son, around 15 I think, normal lad. She walks up to the register and GLaDOS greeted her and asked how day's been and so on. Kay had one of those snooty, spoiled teen voice and tons like from the movies, while her son is fake smiling and trying not to die of embarrassment. She had a huge load of items and I mean huge, almost three carts worth. I'm bagging and it gets overwhelming the son offers to help. I thought at least the son is more friendly than her, but Kay yanks him back. After that, the following conversation ensues. A.S. Ow, Mom. K. Don't help. Let them do it themselves. She sounded demanding and serious. GLaDOS, what the heck? Me, rising anger level one. GLaDOS, he was trying to help. K, no, he needs to learn not to be lazy. She says this pointing to me. Me, rising anger level two. Then Lucky, my BFF, enters and heard what's happening. Lucky walks by and sees my anger rising and pats me on the back to basically say, I'm right here in case anything happens. Two hours later, well, feels like it, all of Kay's stuff was in the carts and the price was way more than my normal paycheck. And now Kay gives Gladys her huge stack of coupons. Gladys scans them but they were all coming back invalid and Gladys tells her this and Kay goes off, yelling and screeching about horrible customer service and the usual Karen stuff. And AS steps in and told her he knew this wouldn't work. Kay screamed at him to keep his D mouth shut. At that moment both me and Gladys' minds clicked and realized something was really fishy. Gladys checked the coupons and saw they were expired, but somehow the date was wrong. At least that's what I understood, like they were all a year off. Gladys explained that the coupons were forged. Kay retorted by even more yelling and screeching about us being liars, and then she points at me and yells this, as loud as day and I quote, and that, insert slur against disabled people, is the store's major problem. The whole store went dead quiet, my anger was skyrocketing. Gladys, Lucky, and a lot of other people were shocked that this waste of air called me that. AS was dead by embarrassment. Then Gladys told Kay to leave. Kay, I want to see the manager. Gladys, I'm the manager and I'm asking you to leave or I'm calling the cops. K, you and that, 
another slur towards disabled people, will be sued. Me, anger over 9,000. Lucky, please tell everyone what you're suing Mangle and Gladys for. Lucky said this in a smug tone. Me, waiting to pull the anger trigger. Kay looks around at everyone staring at her. Um, Lucky, cause I believe we have everything on camera with audio and hundreds of witnesses that would say otherwise. So it would be your best interest to scram and never come back. Or we can show the cops the evidence of fraud and forgery you tried to scam us with and could be in jail for a long time. So what's it gonna be? Kay went ghost white and books it out of the store without AS. AS apologized profusely for his mom's behavior and we all heard tires screeching as Kay squeals out of the parking lot. So we had to call the AS dad to pick him up. Gladys told me to go clock out for the day to heal up from that experience and got the next day off as well. Last I know, Kay was put on the watch list and was forever banned from the store. So the end, I guess. And the last story is the great resigning. As a long time reader of this sub, when this situation happened, anti-work was the first thing I thought of. My mate worked for a tech company for a few years. He was a very hard worker, always came in when emergencies happened, covered for anyone, just a genuinely good dude. He has a handful of kids and didn't make much, but was always on track to get promoted. That and the short commute is why he stayed, I guessed. First year reviews come around and he gets a great review and a 5% raise. Pretty okay. Two out of eight tech people let go, leaving the remaining six to do their jobs. Second gear reviews come around. He meets all goals and then some. Great reviews. But insert excuse here gets a 2% raise. No promotion. No prob, he says. Businesses have tough years from time to time. Two out of six tech people let go. Nobody hired to replace again. Third year rolls around. Dude is excited for his raise and promotion they've been talking about. Insert another excuse. Great review. But no promotion. 2% raise. And after hours pay would be cut in half when tech people took off hours calls from international offices aka in the middle of the night, which he often was the only one to do. Two out of four tech people let go. I'm just glad I still have a job, he says. Fourth year rolls around. Management absolutely promises this guy a promotion. Management says we tried, but finance said no. 2% raise. Two people in tech department left to do the work of eight. Fifth year rolls around COVID. No raises for anyone this year, says CEO on Zoom call from his second house. Management says he's now promoted. He has more work to do, but finance says no pay increase. The title change will look good on my resume, I guess. Obviously, this guy was searching high and low for a new job, and due to the great resigning had people knocking down his door. Found a job with a 10% pay increase, better title, and way more room for growth. Gives 14 days notice. Come to find out the other remaining tech guy plans to retire by the end of the year. Finance calls my dude begging for him to stay. Offers him title change, pay increase, tells him he's the best worker they have. Dude says no, he's been the best worker for six years and makes less now than when he started due to off-hours pay cut and inflation. Finance emails and gives him a name your price offer in writing. Dude says no. Management calls saying guy from finance wants to get in touch with you. Dude says no. They're pooping themselves and my dude feels bad but they made their bed. They're a multi-million dollar international company and my dude was head of internal IT for the whole place. They have no more internal IT department and can't even find anyone for him to train before he goes. CEO still rolls into office from time to time in brand new custom Teslas. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button to support the channel.